Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop, Star Colonies by Davies Design Games. It's for two to four players, takes about 45 to 60 minutes to play, and it's for ages 10 and up. In the game Star Colonies, you're basically going to be doing a deck builder of sorts in which you're going to be taking cards from your a tableau in the middle of the table and putting them into a deck. Now, what's interesting about this game is you're only going to shuffle your deck once. After that, every card that goes in the graveyard will then be flipped up after there's no cards in the deck and put back together again, meaning that you're always going to have the same basic rotation of cards coming out, which is good because you're going to have to memorize your decks and its strategies. You're also going to be basically manipulating different locations on the board, which you're going to be exploring from these little cards here and uh, trying to attain certain things on the cards, whether it's heavy transports or certain colonies, stations, and all that kind of stuff. Up to a certain point when somebody gets enough colonies on on a card you're going to win the game space colonies or star colonies <laughs> and uh, then uh, we will go ahead now and show you the game down below so to set up this game put the cards from each deck listed on here in the proper order you have the outposts the heavy transports and then you have the deck of ships that you'll be able to build you go ahead and shuffle that and deal out one in each spot if you get any that are three or four or higher shuffle them back into the deck and replace it till they're all three or less then you're going to get a deck of cards for yourself of two scouts and seven transports shuffle that and place it on your board that's the only time you're going to be shuffling your deck in this game you're going to go ahead and draw four cards to start and they're going to be some combination of scouts and transports the four phases of the game are scouting deploying buying and refreshing so you're going to play your scouts at the start of the turn for each scout you play, you will reveal a uh, sector. If the sector has a spot for support ships, leave your scout there. If it doesn't, discard it back to your supply and you'll get it use it later. Then, using the remaining scouts, worth one each, or uh, transports, discard them to buy ships. So I'll discard one, and then I'll put a Corvette on top of it. It's very important to put it in the discard the proper way because it's going to simulate a building queue. Now I'm going to put two more and buy this frigate and that's going to be the end of my turn. This is going to be the refresh phase. These cards are going to slide down and more ones are going to come out. Look at this, we got a Dreadnought. The next player is going to take his turn, draw four cards, and then they're going to play. They're going to have a similar turn. They're going to scout. And this one is Asteroid Field, so they're not going to be able to keep their scout there. It's worth a lot of resources, but it's very hard to defend. And then this player is going to go ahead and just pay three and buy a destroyer. And then put that in his discard. End of the turn, this is going to slide down. At the end of a turn, if no one has bought anything from the buying queue, you're just going to go ahead and move the queue down anyway, so the next player always has a new option to buy from. As the game progresses, you're going to get warships that you'll be able to play, and the warships will be able to reinforce sectors or attack enemy sectors. Um, the important part about this is that the colors match, so as you attack, you can play as many ships as you want, as long as they're in the same color, and the enemy will have ships defending, they have a chance to reinforce their ships by playing cards from their hand, at which point you will have one more chance to, as the attacker, to reinforce, and then the damage will go through. So they've got five defense and three attack, and these guys have quite a bit of attack. They've got five attack and eight defense. So they're gonna go ahead and destroy both of these ships, and these ships go to the scrapyard and they're gonna take uh, one with them. They're gonna take a heavy cruiser with them. The rest of them will remain to occupy the new sector, but this sector doesn't have any support slots, so they'll go back to the supply. And I think that's it. We'll come back and talk about it above. So let's go ahead and discuss Star Colonies and uh, what you thought of the game. I went ahead and uh, got to check it out and then I got to play it once or twice, but because Grant played it even more than I, we went ahead and used him to explain the game as well that's right. as coming up to uh, talk about the game as well. Uh, first of all, I'm gonna go ahead and start off with talking about the artwork of the game. I really like space style games. This reminds me of a Star Trek feel. Any type of Battlestar Galactica, it's got the 
I don't know if it's like computeristic. Like, it's like 3D models or something. Yeah, like it reminds that. me of like the old school uh, sci-fi games with just like they have like the CGI art on like the black background. It looks it looks really cool. Yeah, I really actually enjoy that aspect of the game. It's not just a black background too. I don't know if you can see, but yeah, there's like planets and moons in the background. Yep, it has a bit of CG. It's 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 like I don't know. What you Wait, it reminds it. me of the old school like like uh, art for for the spaceships. Yep, yeah. yeah. Um, so I like that aspect of the game. What's also cool about this game too is when you run out of cards from your deck you're going to then take that the deck or a discard pile and flip it up and then you're going to start again with that yeah it so makes kinda... a build queue which if you've played any of the old sci-fi games like all of those have build queues you build a dreadnought it's going to take you you know 30 turns to come out you know so it really it really simulates that yeah so when you get that big ship you know it's going to be a while until you're going to be popping up but you're, you're aware of where it's going to happen so you can kind of you can start throwing out small ships and you'll know that you know they'll just be right there and uh combat in the game is pretty cool as well it's got this back and forth feel to it and sometimes it'll get in, your ship will end up in the scrapyard if if you, you take enough of a loss uh but you're gonna have a knowledge of how many cards how many cards you want to put out as a defender you have the option yeah. to place out more if you can count cards then there's not gonna be any real surprises you know because you can see what they discard you know about when they're gonna get it so you, you have an uh, pretty good approximation of how everything's going to play out. And there's also different colored cards in which you're replacing on your tableau, which of course has certain rules. That's right, they represent allies, so they they reinforce each other, and they don't ever attack each other, so you can stop your enemy's huge dreadnought with just one corvette that's 1-1, one, one, and they can't do anything because they don't attack friends. Yeah, but that 1-1 that one, one is going to end up in the scrap heap, right? No, because they can't attack it. Oh, because yeah, they're, yeah, they're yeah. friends, so yeah, they're, yeah. they're they're just like, oh, hey, buddy. Uh, well, I guess we're gonna go attack that sector over there. And uh, did you explain how to win the game? Uh, so to win the game, you're going to be building outposts and colonies on your habitable worlds, and you're gonna buy these, and they're gonna go in your discard just like everything else. And you build them, and you finally draw them, play them out on the appropriate thing, and you'll gain a a victory star, as as they describe it. And once you have four victory stars, so between four outposts and two colonies somewhere in the middle then you're gonna win the game okay and then you can also steal uh outposts and colonies by attacking them so you know you, you don't, might not even need to build your own you can just mess build, with other people's just take other people's yep and so uh, that those are a lot of the pauses i have with this game uh some of the more a straightforward comments are gonna be like this is more of a gateway game as far as deck builders go with some unique twists and turns. I think so it has pretty some pretty interesting mechanics. It's got banking cards. So most of the time you either play your card or discard them. You have these fields. This one, when you bank a card, it will give you an extra money. But then we have the heavy transport here, which when you bank the card as well, will give you two, two more money. extra. So you get extra money. On, so you on put money. this card here on your next turn, you take it back, you can get four. That makes your one thing into a four. That's really valuable. But the, you know, this, this asteroid belt, it can be attacked. There's, there's no uh, support slots. So every ship involved in the fight is either going to die or go back to the discard. So it's kind of risky. It is kind of risky. The The other mechanic they have is the build queue. Almost no deck builders do that that I'm aware of. No, it's, that, that's what I was saying. That's a new aspect to the game. It's a very simplistic game as far as how it goes. Like, mm -hmm. once you get going, you, maybe two rounds is, is all you need to know what, what's going on in this game. Um, but that being said, that can also be kind of a negative. Uh, it, could be, it could be a little bland for those people who are looking for a more intense deck builder, right? Yeah, I know this. This is gonna come out with an expansion because I think we have some of the ex or one of the expansion cards over here. And this is like it looks to be an upgraded scout. So in addition to doing the thing the scout can do, it can infiltrate and look at your opponent's hand as opposed to its other actions. So that's a that's a nice uh, change on it. And then you got the area control aspect as well, which I don't know many deck builders that do that either. No, yeah, it's it's that's pretty unique actually. I was thinking of the, the game Brass Empire, right? Is that what it was called? Brass Empire is probably the closest, but, but it's this not is still really. different. It's still different, yeah. So it, it, I want to see more stuff on these the cards and I, here. And I know that more they have more stuff. stuff because each of these factions has a ability printed on the card. And they function very interestingly. This one says you can buy the blue faction, the alliance, at one discount less for the first ship you buy a turn. But that turn, you can no longer buy confederation or praetorian ships. Okay, so it gives you kind of a bonus. and It's like a double-edged sword. In yep. way. So, so you get the ship for cheaper, but then you can't buy the other ones. Now, is that worth it? I don't know. Maybe there's a bunch of cheap ships you want to buy, and then you have to buy in a different order, too. Because if you buy that, that blue ship first, then it's going gonna, it's gonna to go into your queue first, but it might mess up your combo. So 
with these deck builders, there's always a lot of choice you have to make. And Indeed. in this game specifically, there's not a lot of randomness. I'd say the only randomness in the game is probably when you explore these locations, what ones are going to pop out. Yeah, the, the only randomness is really the shuffling of the deck because there was a time that it just lined up perfectly. Dreadnought popped out and I had eight, eight, or, you know, I had all my resource guys on the board and I was like, oh, well, I'll just buy that. Thanks. Yep. So, uh, overall, the game's a really cool little game. It's a gateway game, though, and I... If you're going to want uh, to fit the audience for a, like, a more deep, strategic game, I'd probably want to see more stuff on the cards. See the expansion content. Yeah, I, I, I want to see the more expansion content. So when I see the Kickstarter campaign, I want to see more stuff like this. This, yeah. this is really cool stuff here. Um, maybe that's just because I'm more of a, into really heavy deck builders, though. But you seem to really like this game, and then Kelsey also played it as well. And mm -hmm. what do you think? Uh, she liked it. She just thought she she didn't really like the build cue. She wanted to see it more random, which I which takes I guess away from the spirit. And of the she's game, used to playing. She's newer, so she's used to playing the de regular. But deck the builders. randomness can help new new players. You know, you buy a dreadnought next turn, it comes out. It's pretty sweet. You're like, oh, I don't get this until this time, and so you're not really prepared for mm -hmm. it. So it's gonna be you're gonna like it if if you're prepared for that. If you understand the type of game it's going to be. But overall, a really cool little game. I really like all the little intricacies in the game. I'm hoping to see all the different cards that are going to come out with soon. Artwork is good. Quality components is really good for a prototype, so I expect it to be pretty good when it is fully released. And it's a very simple and easy game to learn and to teach. So, Sorry. anything else to say? No, that's it. All right, thanks for watching.